I don't think the compliance mechanism will be the strongest part of the Paris Agreement. But there's a very good reason for that, which is that if you have a very strong compliance regime, you incentivize countries to be less ambitious in what they put forward. Because if a compliance regime is going to punish countries, um, as in a sense the Kyoto, uh, uh, the Kyoto compliance regime did, then countries do not want to go there. They don't want to be put in a position where they could fail to meet their targets and then be put into a, a, a regime. Even a sort of naming and shaming regime um, looks very bad. And that would encourage countries to minimise their commitments so that they had less likelihood of, of, uh, of being non-compliant. So in the real world that we inhabit, in which countries are being asked to make really quite serious changes to the structure of their economies, which they're not absolutely certain that they can achieve or how costly they will be, having a weak compliance mechanism encourages them to be more ambitious. And to be perfectly honest, it is the only realistic option. We are simply not going to see major economies putting themselves in danger of being, of being non-compliant with international agreement. So I'm afraid that is the price we're paying for having a universal agreement which is demanding a lot from countries.